All right, this is going to be a really short lecture on GPU programming uh, with with uh, the NVIDIA API CUDA and specifically uh, using the wrapper, the Python wrapper, PyCUDA. Uh, it's by no means going to be an extensive uh, talk about CUDA. We're barely going to scratch the surface only just to show how we'd use PyCUDA to run some simple parallel jobs on a uh, on a GPU. So you may see this term, we've talked about it in class a little bit, GP, GPU stands for, for uh, General Purpose Graphics Processing Unit Programming. And so typically when you see this GP, GPU, um, it's indicating usually numerical programming, but it could be you know other anything other than pixel rendering, which is what uh, you know graphics processor units were originally designed for. And there's several APIs, you know, application programming interfaces that allow us to do this type of programming. Uh, CUDA is probably the most widespread, uh, probably because it's the easiest to use, in my opinion. Uh, unfortunately, it just only works for NVIDIA GPUs only. So uh, the computer that you're using has to have an NVIDIA GPU in it uh, for you to use CUDA. There's also OpenCL, which uh, stands for Open Compute Language. Um, and uh, then there's also Open ACC, uh, which basically stands for Open Accelerator. Uh, and this is a very new API that uh, basically is intended for the compiler to take over a lot of the uh, optimizations to running your code in parallel on these accelerators. And we talked in class about what accelerators are with re you know respect to traditionally their GPUs, but they also could be these newer mini integrated core chips uh, for for instance the new uh, the new Intel uh, Xeon Psi chips so of course uh, you know CPUs are good at lots of things scheduling and other things um, and, and that's why they're ubiquitous uh, uh, GPUs are good at pixel rendering or at least that's what they originally intended for so they're good at doing, you know, very kind of a single instruction operations, uh, but doing a ton of them at once. So, uh, you know, kind of a programming model that we would use on a CPU to take advantage of parallel. Say we had some parallel uh, vector uh, or some parallel data, we would perhaps, uh, in this case, break it up into uh, four chunks that each of them would have been sent to its own core to then be iterated over um, and this is kind of the typical you know MPI programming paradigm um, however on you know, a GPU what we would typically do uh, is have that data and the data would be broken down into even smaller chunks basically where you know, each object or each, you know, element of, say, the array would just have a single operation done on it, and that would all be done simultaneously on each of the so-called CUDA cores. Okay, I think you get the idea. So this is a typical, you know, but, but GPUs are basically... Um, they're not good at uh, scheduling jobs, and uh, they have other types of um, issues associated with the amount of memory that's on the chip, although those are going away. Uh, GPUs also have a very special type of memory called texture memory that uh, we're not really going to talk about, but you can really get some extreme performance gains if you know how to fully optimize your code to take advantage of all that. So... What PyCUDA provides is a is a obviously a Python interface to NVIDIA's CUDA API, and uh, it has abstractions to make a CUDA program even easier. It takes care of garbage collection and uh, some of the kind of behind the scenes mem copy uh, operations that you would typically use when you're programming CUDA. Uh, but it also has the full power of the CUDA API if you need it because you can actually just write plain old CUDA code. Uh, and then uh, the source module will compile it for you, and then you can call it from within your, within your Python code. Uh, and then, of course, it has a lot of automated error checking and other things. So let's take a look at a simple example 
this is a, a where this is a very very simple problem. Um, this is basically where a, 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 we're just going to take an array and double it on on the GPU. So of course we have to uh, like always you know we're going to import Python and then several modules associated with uh, the PyCuda, but kind of most importantly what you see here this is actual CUDA code so this is uh, I'm not expecting you to, to know this you know we're not studying this but uh, it's very C like of course and if you were writing pure CUDA you would this would be in its own file and then you would call the NVCC compiler on it uh, the, the NVIDIA distributed compiler um, and, and uh, you know of course you'd have to have a lot of other code but this is the part of the CUDA code that actually does the computation that we want and so we're going to assign it uh, basically it's a function CUDA underscore double that uh, is going to take a, an array of floats and, um, and and return an array called destination in this case uh, I think there's a little error here in that uh, no no this should be fine um, so anyway this is kind of the parallel parallelization part it it's basically assigning a, a const int i um, to all of the uh, all across an array of cores or an array of uh, uh, of operations that are going to be done and again uh, you know you really kind of have to know CUDA to understand all this and there's whole books and courses taught on that and that's not really what we're I just want you guys to be aware of it but then basically uh, you notice uh, that we're, we're going to just take every ith element of a and multiply it by two and return it to the ith element of dest uh, and of course you don't see a loop here there's no loop so all of these are done uh, basically simultaneously uh, so then we're just going to um, call a, a, a convenience function here as part of PyCuda to make this function available uh, and then we'll just actually run it so the first thing we do is assign a variable a that's going to be 400 ones uh, and we're going to assign a, an, an empty variable uh, answer that's just going to be the same size as a uh, but with zeros and then this is actually where we're going to call the code and when we do this PyCuda actually uh, you know compiles this uh, source code up here with the MVCC compiler takes care of everything behind the scenes and then there's some kind of special uh, output here but basically uh, we're going to return you know so th th this array has to actually be copied to the GPU uh, and then well actually both of these have to be copied to the GPU and then this one returned back into the CPU memory so that's what this indicated here uh, we're going to return it or out you know out of the GPU is going to be answer into the GPU is going to be a and uh, you know th this is a block grid this is more kind of very specific CUDA stuff that I'll leave it to you to take a look at if you if you really want to get uh, the most out of the code and then you know we're just going to print the answer so we can go ahead and take a look at this on Shamu uh, of course on Shamu uh, we have to uh, SSH to one of the viz nodes either visual dash zero dash zero or visual dash zero dash one either one will work and then once you're on there uh, I'll just go to where I have these file files saved we'll need to do a module load Python that will automatically load all of the dependent CUDA and PyCUDA stuff so that we can just run the code. So, so we'll just run this in um, so we'll just run this in IPython and drop into an interactive session. And there you can see the result. So it just uh, took an array. Uh, A was originally ones, and uh, answer then is returned two. So we just multiplied everything by two, and uh, that was done on the GPU. Now I do want to point out that there is kind of no free lunch here. Uh, you really have to keep the GPU busy to make up for the latency of moving, uh, moving the the uh, 
the code over, uh, moving the data over to the GPU and then returning it because it uh, it does take a while. So if we just look at like what you know NumPy is uh, eight times two, uh, you can see that uh, it's it's pretty fast compared to uh, this really simple program we use. So in this case, if all you wanted to do was double something, obviously it's not worth the extra effort to do this. You really have to keep the GPUs busy. You need big arrays and you need a little bit more complicated uh, arithmetic than just simply doubling something. But uh, just for illustration I'll show you. Oops. We want to time that. So you can see it's much, much slower. And it's actually not the calculation that's slower, but uh, it's it's actually the latency of moving the, the data over and making the function available and all of that uh, kind of overhead. So. The good news is that uh, there is uh, some convenience function that Pi CUDA gives you to kind of take care of everything for you, more or less behind the scenes. Uh, this is uh, the same code, essentially. It just takes an array of ones uh, that is uh, defined from a NumPy array and uh, then I define an A underscore GPU. And then uh, using this convenience module GPU array, I uh, then basically send that array to the GPU versus via this function, and then uh, kind of behind the scenes you can uh, can run this two times a GPU that'll run on the GPU, and then you have this getter module that gets it back, and we can print out the answer. So it's uh, you know less code, but unfortunately it's about the same amount of time as I'll show you. Uh, it's not really any faster. Uh, again, because of memory latency, the, the the actual computation that's done on the GPU is very, very fast. So uh, we'll go ahead and run the um, double easy. And, you know, we get get the same result, of course. Um, but the, uh, the function itself, if we do uh, time it, You can see it's it's faster than uh, what we had before, but it's not even close to you know still not even close uh, to the NumPy. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. That's that's actually quite a bit slower. That's uh, that's milliseconds versus microseconds. So that's even slower than than uh, writing our own CUDA kernel. Um, and that's because when you use this convenience function, it's actually doing the whole compilation, move, moving over and everything behind the scenes for you. Whereas earlier, uh, by the time I called the CUDA underscore double, uh, the file, uh, the, the code had already been compiled and made available to the GPU. We just were calling into it. So anyway, uh, you know, given these examples, you know, I don't want you to think that NumPy is faster because that's, you know, uh, that's certainly not the case when you have large data and you know more complicated uh, things. I just wanted to show you that there's no free lunch, and that uh, you know you really have to keep the GPUs busy to make it worthwhile. And the memory latency of moving the data over to the GPU and moving it back to the CPU. So anyway, I just wanted to uh, give you give you a little demonstration of uh, PyCuda.